Hi, this is Mary Faye, uh, and this will be my last video for this class. Um, so this class really focused on the environmental factors of interpreting, and I didn't realize until now that I could use English to do this video, so I was waiting until I had the time, the proper attire and lighting to make an ASL um, signed video, but I'm glad that I can use English to describe um, just the different environmental factors that go into interpreting. Um, I would say the most important thing about environmental uh, aspects and in interpreting is the challenges. So when you go into a situation you're going to interpret, you need to be aware of the potential challenges in the environment, such as poor audio, um, bad microphones, bad lighting. It could also be not understanding someone based on their tone. Um, and that's actually, that was one of my favorite activities during this quarter was the activity about tone and register because I didn't realize how much that plays a part in the environmental aspects of interpreting. Um, I thought that may be connected to a different a different category of the DSC. Um, but I think often in English, people can have miscommunications all the time, especially when you're trying to translate in between two different languages, miscommunications are very fr frequent. So if you go into a situation aware of the environmental factors you're going to be facing and the challenges you might um, you know, run into, then you'll feel more prepared and that will help reduce your internal intrapersonal aspects um you know reduce your stress and everything like that so they're all connected environmental aspects intrapersonal and intra interpersonal um they all play a really important role in interpreting in general um i i think for interpreters it's important for people to remember um that you know it's okay if it's rushed and you don't know all the environmental factors. And some things are, you know, hard to prevent. Like, how would you know that the microphone would go out or something like that? Or you just physically cannot hear. Um, I did an internship not too long ago and the person was mumbling into their mic and I couldn't hear them. My, um, the person that I was, you know, observing and interning for, they were like, what'd they say? Oh my god, I don't know. I was supposed to be there to support them and be a part of their interpreting team, but things like that happen, you know, but being aware next time, because we were in the same location a couple of months later um, for the event that I was helping with, and the exact same thing happened, so at least we knew and we were able to inform the deaf person, like, hey, by the way, this is, like, really hard to hear. Um, so that's just kind of one of the main things about environmental uh, factors. Um, sometimes environmental factors can be good things too, it's not always bad, and it's really important to know tone and register, um, especially in, in English because we use it a lot to describe or convey uh, certain messages, um, and so you want to be able to best represent your clients hearing and deaf, and so by mastering reading body language and um, really knowing how to read someone's tone and register and getting a feel for the atmosphere. You can really capture their personality and just the attitude and mood in the room. And that I think will really benefit you or a person as an interpreter to do a really good job uh, representing their clients. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I appreciate everything you've done during class. I appreciated the workload, I feel like. Um, the homework was very manageable, um, and yeah, thank you for a great quarter.